G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now it's been over half a year since I last worked on the St. Louis. There's just been a lot of interruptions. I mean, I broke an arm. You know, that's going to slow you down. Anyhow, we're back now. The ships are back. Yep, no more of this bloody shipping around. The ships are in. Okay, I won't ship you. <laughs> and look, um, you may notice there's cannons everywhere. Cannons on the top deck, and there's cannons here, and there's cannons on the fore deck here, right? And that's, that's quarter deck there, right? And the main deck cannons are there, and they're all tied up with string, right? Like this, right? I couldn't get this one to fit on there. It's a little bit too big, but more of that later. I'll show you basically why I have a dirty great big cannon, right? <laughs> the great big that one's about a one fifteen scale, right? Whereas everything on this kit is one to one forty fourth scale. So you may see look at all those cannons, and they're all rigged in place okay and that's what this video is going to be about it's going to be about me tying string around these tiny little they're only like nine millimeter long carts and um and then basically attaching them to the hull it's actually not as hard as you think and i've dumbed down a method that is really easy that anyone can do it requires minimal swearing, and honestly, it gives a great little effect. It looks very realistic. At least I think so. The purists are going to go, ah, no, you missed this knot here, and I'll bugger them, okay? No. It looks good for a scale model, and that's all we're trying to achieve, all right? Without losing too much hair, and without your moustache falling out. <sighs> Anyhow, if you'd like to see how I tied all these cannons on and learn my simple knot method, then we'll hang around. We'll get on to that after the music. So, without further ado... Let's roll the music. So seven months later, and now I'm back on the St. Louis. So there's a bit of reorientating to do, and this is a, a problem when I don't do a model for a while, is getting my head around where I was at. Now, I do remember I was working on the um, tail, the stern, oh, and I did that lovely gilded sort of lamp and I did the um, figurehead and that was some of the last things that I did and then I started doing a bit of the um, the dead eyes and the rigging and played around with that and had some ideas but I got shot down by a few people that I was doing it all wrong and really I don't give a stuff you know some of what they were saying I'll take on board so I'll give them that and there is a better way to do it not that it matters because a lot of the stuff they're talking about would never be seen but I've had to think about redoing the whole thing so one of the things I've thought of is with the um, channel boards, right? Because so these go here, and then all your dead eyes go there, and they go up. Now, what sort of bugged me the whole time is trying to do the... Um, and you've got a dead eye on there, right? Like that. And then I'm trying to do the bit that comes out here, right? The um, I think they call it the channel plate. It's like just like a flat staple that comes out, and it cements the side of the hole. And eventually... I sort of cottoned on to an idea. I saw a guy doing a much bigger ship and he was doing the whole thing with burnished wire. So I had a look around and lo and behold, this is what florists use to tie up you know, dead plants. And um, it's the right width, it's the right colour, it's ready to go, it's stiff and it's bendy. Um, that sounds like it could be useful. So here's this channel plate, um, or channel board that I was working on, and this happens to be even the exact size that I drilled the hole for and then that will fit perfectly on the side of my ship see what happens is that will go down and it'll create the bottom linkage from the dead eye okay more of that later but that's a quick solution to a problem that I was just struggling with is how to secure your dead eyes on the channel board the other thing is I've got all my cannons, right? And they're terrific, except I'm missing one. I'm one short on the um, the 12 pounders. So I don't know what happened there. One of these is missing. Maybe it fell down inside the hull, because some of these decks are still dry fit, because I'm still yet to put those cannons that go in there, hidden inside. Because remember, I, I cut a big hole in this deck. There might be a photo here, right? Cut a big hole in there, so it'd be more accurate and correct. Because there was this bulkhead that could have gone in, but in the end, I end up making that arch and doing that, which I preferred. And that is probably how it should be, because it wouldn't be all sealed up like that. There certainly would be a bulkhead at this end, but not there, going back through underneath the quarter deck. So I'm short one of those. Maybe it'll turn up inside. Maybe not. I'll have to figure that out. Then there's the very little itsy-bitsy 
little six pounders. Okay, so tiny little things. And I had, in a previous video, scratch built their trucks because the trucks on them were ruined because I had to actually take parts that a previous builder had covered in blobby glue and try and resurrect them and I stole the barrels from another kit, a spare wasser kit that I've got and so on and so on. But just before Mr. Mouse Muffins, Craig, just before he passed away, he um, printed me out all these cannons. And I didn't know if I'd use them. I thought I'd be using them on a Zvezda kit with the cannons for that were absolutely dreadful. And it just comes to pass that they are exactly the size I need for the six pounders on the deck. And they are, I don't know if you can see in this light, but they are incredibly detailed. And I've got a whole stack of them. I'd already sort of primed them to see what they look like. I think I'll replace the six that go on the um, quarter deck. I'll replace them with Mr. Mouse Muffin's um, cannons as a bit of a tribute to him. The, um, it's a shame he's gone. He was really helpful in all the stuff that he produced for me. I mean, he did all the, for the Schnell boat, he produced a whole lot of stuff in Breslin and with that. And he gave me that submarine review, even though I didn't really like it much, but it was beautifully made. You know, it was fantastic. So, um, yeah, I will be using those. So unfortunately I did all that work on the scratching, that's fine, that was done. This is easier, faster, and they're going to look a lot nicer. So we'll do those. Now there's um, other little trucks, there's four tiny ones that are just in, they don't even have wheels, they're just like slidey trucks. Probably can't even see them, it's so little. They're okay, they're fine, they go on the foredeck there, above the forecastle, so they're fine, they can sit on there. So that all works. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is mounting and then rigging, here's some photos. This is what we're going to try and accomplish, or something close. I mean, it's so small. This thing's, you know, I'll be rigging something that's half a centimetre long. So it's going to be a very, very simplified version of these photos. But I'll do something to rig them in place. And then I can finally glue in all the decks. Maybe I can find that lost cannon that's inside there. Seal everything up. And then we can get on with the rigging. Now that I've got these cannons all painted up, their barrels and their trucks, I've started rigging them and putting them in place. And um, here's one I did before. <laughs> um, yes, it's a bit big, isn't it? That's actually 10 times the size of the ones on um, on the ship, okay? So um, the big, well, big-ish, 12 pounders are that big, all right? That big. <laughs> and I've even managed to rig a tiny little six pounder okay so that's um sort of rigged up there ready to go in and it looks a bit tricky but actually it's not it's not that hard at all so let me sort of explain this is still dumbed down i mean here's a photo right of kind of what rigging might look like for one of these but this is a dumbed down version i've i've done it on here just to show you because i've tried to shoot <laughs> basically rigging up one of the little ones and my fat fingers get in the way. So I'm going to show you how I do it on this one, which is fairly big, and then that can be translated in the little ones very easily. All right, I've stripped the cannon down. So you can see now what we won't have in those tiny little ones is you're not going to have these little rings. So I won't use them. Okay, so there's rings here which normally tie on. Won't have those. We're also not putting any pulleys on it. What I might do with my little ones, I might put little blobs of PVA white wood glue that have been coloured in black paint and they'll sort of do for the pulley blocks. Not going to do that. I'm just going to show you a very simple rig that you can achieve. Now, first thing you're going to need is this hole. Okay, now not all Canon trucks have them. However, these tiny little ones that Craig printed for me, 
See, they've got the little hole. Can you see it there? It's between the wheels. There's a little hole. So it already had a hole. I thought, oh, okay, well, those ones have got it. So that means I could thread through. These 12 pounders don't have that hole. See, Airfix didn't put it in there. So we can easily drill that. That's no problem at all. We can drill a hole through there. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Not a problem. So we've got a hole and we're going to use it because that really helps with rigging this truck. So I've got a fairly long piece of thread. Now I used 10 millimeters of this cordage, actually. It's really tiny cordage, okay? Um, can't tell you the thickness. It's just what I had that looked about right. But anyhow, I've got some thicker stuff that looks about right. This is actually what I used to make the bumpers on the schlepper. You ever seen that video? So you take your cordage, right? And this works on both this large one and the small ones, and you pop it in the hole. Now, the beauty with the small ones is the hole is pretty close together. So when you stick it in, if you get it the right angle, it goes straight through. But on the underside, you'll see it's open on this one. That isn't the case with the Airfix trucks. So um, you have to have the holes sort of, well, they're fairly close together anyway. So you just got to poke it through the other side. Here, we can go underneath. It's a lot easier. And our rope is a lot bendier. So we get that through and we make sure that it is equal. So pull it till the ends are the same. Okay, that's nice and equal. Now, this bit at the end here, I'm reliably informed this is called a cat testicle. Uh, a cat catticle. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's one of those. It's a catacle, okay? Um, I, I thought it was called something else, but yeah. Beep, beep. Okay, so that cat testicle, right, at that point, we simply go underneath that and we do a half hitch here. We just hitch around, okay? So that's like half a granny knot, huh? for those of you that don't know. Oh, half hitch underneath there. Now, we should go over like that, but that proves really difficult later on. So unlike the way they're done on the um, photos and because it's so tiny when we're doing the other ones we're going to do another so it's basically just a reef knot or some people do a granny knot okay so that's tied off and i'm not putting it through the loops as i did before which is a bit more accurate because we don't have loops on those tiny little ones so that's securely on there okay now you bring that forward okay those two and they should still be basically the same length and you'll need the second piece It'll probably be the same width when um, you do it. About on the, um, there's a little bumpy bit here, and it's sort of, it's sort of where the truck goes, just above the hole, just before the hole. Okay, so you want those nice and straight, and you put this under there, and again we'll do some more granny knots. Okay. Okay, so checking that, I want that to be even along there, and where it comes here. The idea is to get those to go along. What I end up doing on the small ones is I actually glue it all in place. I glue the granny's knot. I glue that. So there looks good. So tighten that off. Okay. And then you'll have to put a second one on so that it doesn't unravel. So a second hitch and we're basically tying a reef knot. If you know how to tie a reef knot. If you don't know how to tie a reef knot, it probably ends up being a granny knot. What's the difference? Well, in a reef knot, they come out even, right? In a granny knot, they come out all higgledy-piggledy because grannies are a bit higgledy-piggledy. Okay, so that's like that. Now, here's the trickiest bit because we don't have hooks on our model. Tiny little ones, right? There's no hooks. So I came up with this idea and it kind of works. It's cheating, but in the end, it all comes out in the wash. I take this down underneath. I've got to keep that in that position there, right? down and underneath the truck, okay, up and over and through the back here. And it's actually not that hard to do on the small ones. Uh, you've just got to basically make sure you've got this little opening here and you can prise that open so that you can then get in and grab your rope. So that goes through there, under there, around there, right? And then you pull it to the hole, okay? So you want it here to, to line up the hole. And then once it's at that point there, it can go forward. Easy as that. And that is pretty well a truck tight. So I'll do it again on this side. So making sure that stays there. Okay. We go under, over, and then we're going to tuck it through at the back here where the cannon is. Okay. And believe me, there is a spot. Even on those tiny little, even on those tiny little six pounders, there's a spot. Pull it back to where the truck is and pull it forward. And look. 
you have got a red cannon. It's so close. It's so close. Now the next trick, which I will show you actually on the model, is these then are supposed to go to uh, you know hooks and, and tackle blocks on the basically on the gun. Okay, so your wall will be there. Okay, so they'll, they'll pretty well go to there and there'll be hooks. And There's no way I'm going to do it in this scale. My walls are too thin. There's no way I can put hooks on. Can't do it. So what I did was a very simple trick. I ran both these lines and the barrel through the porthole. Right. So here's your porthole. I ran everything through the porthole. And then, I want to turn this around without knocking off mass, so I have managed to knock off the bowsprit. So I'll get rid of that. And then what I did, and you won't even be able to see it, on either side here is a piece of line. And I'll show this in a sec when I do the actual thing for you. But I pulled the lines through and I added a tiny bit of white glue, pulled them out at 45 degrees and let it set. And then I got it with a knife and just went cut, cut. You don't even know they're there, right? But on this side, can you see? They go up to the wall and they stop either side of the little cannon porthole, right? So that actually is correct, and it's so easy. So the thing is, tying cannons shouldn't be that difficult if you just do something simple like this. I know the purists are going to go, ah, but no, it's not. Ex no, no, it's not. It's not exact. It's cheating. It's scale modeling. Everything is approximations. Everything is what is achievable at scale. And at the end of the day, look, this is so tiny, right? <laughs> These things are smaller than a finger. It doesn't matter. They'll be fine. Okay. Let's replicate this, but in scale. All right. Let's do it in 1 1 44 scales. There's only 9 millimeters long. Okay. Drill. We'll need about a 0.5 bit there. Okay. And we select a point halfway between those two little wheels, but it'll be just high enough so it's going to actually get across the truck. Now, I have removed the barrel because I'd forgot. We could remove the barrel with these, yep, which does make it a bit easier. You can see all the way through. So, drill, 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 all the way through. Bear it out a little bit with my uh, trademark little um, corn on the cob tool. Drill from the opposite side as well, I find, just in case. Now, we're going to need some string. And this stuff is, I don't know, it's really tiny. <laughs> it's just whatever fitted in the hole and looked right. 10 centimetres, right? That's how much. It just happens to be exactly on that bend, which is handy because you need to know it's going to be half and half. Now, this is a block of beeswax, and we will use this on the string. You just rub it through like that. It makes it so much easier to thread. So look at that. Straight through, both holes, no problem. Equidistant, right? Make sure your string is pretty even. That really helps later on. Okay. Cannon back in. <laughs> yeah, we need that in because we're going to tie it now. So just like we did on the big one, we do the little half hitchy thing, and um, we tie that over. Um, best to hold it with a little clampy thing because it's very fiddly to do otherwise. So again, we hitch that over the top and that gets attached to the cat testicle, uh, cat, cat testicle, you know, there you go. So there you go. That's how that fits. <laughs> All right. So that bit's done. Now we put on a little bit of glue and we wait a little while for that to set. Okay. So talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Once that's set, now we can wrap it around the bottom of the front wheel, across the top of the front wheel. And again, my fingers are all over this, so you can't really see. That's why I did the really big one, because if I tried to explain this with my big fat wombat fingers in the way, you wouldn't know, okay? And I do a little extra knot here, which ties that off, all right? So that's it. Do that. And of course, you're going to repeat that on the other side as well. And there's a top bit that needs time, but that I could not, I could not videotape that for the life of me. So moving along, once you've got it all tied up, you sneak it in through the, um, the little, you know, flap hole, porthole, cannon porthole thing. Yeah, the hole. Shove it through the hole and then a little bit of glue on each side because that is so close to where it actually would be. And that's it. Glue that on and wait a while. Those guys have all had some time to set. So now, if we're lucky... We should be able to put a bit of tension on them, bring in these little trimming scissors of mine, gone, and gone. There we go. She is fully armed to the teeth now. All the cannons are in. Now, I've still got to rig the little back ones here on the water deck shore, but um, kind of run out of time today. But I think I've shown you how easy it is. At least it was easy to see on the big cannon, right? So, yeah. 
it's a lot easier to see what you're doing when you've got a great big cannon like this. So um, if you want to learn how to rig a cannon, 3D print a really big little prick. Yeah, and then you can um, practice tying him up to get it right, and then it's not as hard. And I mean, yeah, there's a bit of swearing, there's a bit of confungling, there's a bit of fumbling around, running out of the room in a fit and scaring the cat. But it gets done. I don't think I want to do it again. I think I'd like to print them with a the rope on. And I might look at doing that sometime next time. It's actually design them so that they're printable. Anyhow, that's it. That's everything for this video. Next time, we'll be getting on with the shrouds and the rat lines and doing all of that. But for now... Hit the buttons down here. They're all very important, apparently. Apparently, they feed an algorithm. The algorithm is very hungry, so do that. But there will be another part out in the next week or so. Hopefully, I'm feeling a bit better after being asphyxiated by all those bloody resin fumes. More about that another day. And anyhow, that's it. Goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Udini.